Max isn't coming with us this trip. So a little bit of pizza crust as a treat. We're gonna be running and gunning non-stop, so bye Max. Bye bye. Alright, got a snowmobile, two snowmobiles on a trailer. Can Am Commander, I think she's just 19, 800. Pretty cool. And a almost stage two Subaru WRX. That thing's pretty sick. Ready to go? Okay, let's go. So everyone's always asking me, why pick up versus semi? Why don't you get in a semi? You should get a semi. You should, semis make more money. Semis this, semis that. It's like, no, there's more to it. It's a common question I get all the time. It gets asked on those trucking groups all the time. Why do you run a semi versus a pickup? There's a lot of different reasons, but I'm gonna just cover my personal reasons and just cold hard cash. So here we go. The first reason is this right here. I'm getting 22.2 liters per hundred kilometers driving 60 to 70 miles an hour. That's 100, 110 for us Canadians. And uh, I'm getting, yeah, over the last 200 kilometers, that's what we've been getting, 22.2, 222. It's a good number. And especially when you're talking about fuel uh, uh, consumption in today's day and age where you gotta be above upper middle class to afford the damn stuff in the first place, it is very important. And right now we got a car, nice Subaru, we got a side-by-side -side, uh, snowmobile trailer with two snowmobiles on it and another snowmobile on the back. We're getting around $3 per kilometer, maybe just a bit above. I'll actually do that up for you now. So we are just over $3 a kilometer, I just checked, and that's for a return, that's for a, a backload, as, as they say. So that's not even our full rate. Usually trucks charge three, four dollars a kilometer one way, come back empty a lot of the times or with barely anything. Um, so yeah, so I'm headed in there, this is it, and then we're probably getting five dollars per kilometer on the way back. Now that doesn't happen all the time, but it is happening today and it's a good day. So that's it, we're loaded and getting 22.2, we're still at 22.2 liters per hundred kilometers. A tractor, even empty, you're not getting 30. 30 for the very best on fuel tractors, that's what you're getting, uh, even unladen, which is a fancy word for empty. And there's nothing you can do about that. Once you start loading it, that's the problem. Once you start loading it, now you're getting into 30, even 40 sometimes, and <laughs> the pocketbook suffers. You gotta take care of this guy. You gotta take care of the wallet, because you need the wallet to take care of the truck, your family, everything. Our biggest ex expense is fuel. And using a pickup, that is how, I'm pretty sure that is how I've been able to do this. I don't think I would have been able to do this in a tractor. I'm not sure what other loads I would have gotten if I had a tractor, but I tell you, fuel, fuel hurts. It does not hurt nearly as much in this truck. So. Un unloaded if we have to go empty we're getting under 20 liters per hundred kilometers usually and it is so easy to just run to get little loads stuff like that uh, when you're not paying as much to do that so it opens up possibilities I can travel more to get these loads it just it just works so we're going to pick up a 15,500 pound backhoe and a bunch of other stuff some roofing metal some quads stuff like that I am able to scale that in this truck. Thanks to the trailer, we got 30,000 pound GVWR on that, and then our 14,000 pound GVWR on this truck, we are able to pull that and scale it no problem. These trucks, as long as you're taking your time, they'll last forever, and they can haul whatever. You know, going up bigger hills, I just leave it at half throttle, let her eat, and you know, I, if, it, if I'm going up the hill doing 20 or 30, who gives a shit? We're not on the interstate. We pass one vehicle every like few hours sometimes. Um, so we're not holding up traffic, just taking our time cruising along. These trucks are performing great for that. And even then, even then, once we are loaded with, you know, a 35, 36,000 pound trailer, we're still getting 32, 33 liters per hundred kilometers. 
which is not bad. And guys, for reference, 30 liters per hundred kilometers, I think is five or six miles per gallon. But if you can just run that through a, a converter real quick for me, that would be great. Also guys, while I'm asking you to do favors, if you can subscribe, and we love seeing the numbers go up. We're putting a lot of work in. Like the video, leave a comment. It helps the uh, YouTube algorithm to help see these kinds of videos and hopefully help some people like you and me in the future. So that's it. That's talking about fuel economy and how that will help any business. I think every trucking company should be running some pickups. They're good for five, 600,000 kilometers if they're tuned right, you're, they're taken care of. Um, you know, sometimes replacing a motor in a semi is gonna cost as much as replacing a pickup truck in some cases. Uh, and that's, that's kind of crazy to think about. So that segues us into our next topic is maintenance. Now, oil changes, 200 bucks for synthetic, you can get oils and filters uh, that are good for 20, 30,000 kilometers. And honestly, it takes 20 minutes to change oil. It's not a huge deal. Well, 30. 30 is my best time. And aside from that, you got brakes. Brakes can be pretty affordable on tractors. We're talking about $100 per corner in some cases. Um, but not all. Not all. It can get expensive there too. But brakes. Brakes are about the same. Tires, I don't know. I got 100,000 kilometers on these tires and they are still good. For, for, for pavement and wet pavement, they are still good. I wouldn't run them in the winter. Probably shouldn't have ran them last winter. But on dry pavement in the summer, they are good. And this is on a pickup. The stock tires that come with the 19.5 dually wheels on the 450. So, and probably the 552. So that's super impressive. That's a huge cost cut uh, compared to other trucks. When I go to replace these tires, they're gonna be a fraction of the cost of a tractor uh, tire as well. I don't have to worry about air systems. I don't have to worry about uh, extra axles. I don't have to worry about a lot of mechanical stuff. It's a simple single axle setup and uh, there, there's, there's its own simplicity that comes with that. So there's something we, as, as truckers, have to look at, and that is a Schedule A. Now the Schedule A is basically a list of things that we need to have working to be able to pass the state inspection by the DOT. So we need, we need, to, we need to have that and we need to be able to cross everything off that list. I'd say in this pickup we only have two-thirds of what tractor trailers have on that list. So that is a whole lot less stuff that can go wrong. We're talking about air leaks, uh, hydraulic systems, the drum brakes and how they have to be checked and working. And I could read it off, but there's a lot of stuff that is not there. When I look through it, I can just skip a bunch of it. And yeah, in the end it comes to the bottom dollar. If you can keep a tractor trailer loaded and making, you know, four, five, six dollars a kilometer or more, then you're gonna do good. If you're making high dollars per kilometer long distance, obviously a tractor trailer is gonna be better for long distance. And there's a lot of cases where you're gonna make more money with a tractor trailer. There's also an argument to be made that with a tractor, you're taken more seriously, you're gonna get better loads, you're gonna get more loads. Um, that's an argument that, that can be made. I neither agree or disagree with that, but it would not surprise me one bit if that was the case. I have been able to keep this thing loaded pretty good with lighter stuff, which is better in all ways as long as we're still getting paid the same. And I haven't really needed to upgrade for those reasons. Tractors, they can be more comfortable, they can be more, and we're getting into personal reasons now, they can be more comfortable, they can be, you know, less maintenance over long periods of time. They're gonna last one to two million kilometers usually. I mean, if you're like me, you're guaranteed to get a lemon and uh, you're gonna make it 20,000 kilometers and it's gonna be in the shop for five months. So, uh, so yeah, I like the pickups for the cost of a motor in a, in, a, in a transport truck. You can get a whole new pickup. I mean, why not? Yeah, and along with the personal reasons, I love, and this is, this is the reason why I will, I'm not saying my company won't have tractor trailers. I'm saying I will not be driving one because Half the reason I do this is to be able to jettison the trailer and just go find a cool destination spot, go visit family, 
go off into weird places to get new customers and uh, make small pickups just in the bed, bring it back to the trailer, and being able to just unhook, you know, tour around cities, go to grocery stores, do whatever you want. You have a regular vehicle once you ditch the trailer. Um, that's invaluable for me, and that's half the reason I wanted to do trucking is because I'm able I'm able to do that. I can enjoy each destination. The entire thing is just a big vacation for me. So, aside from working 24 hours a day, messaging people and arranging loads and uh, maintenancing stuff and fixing stuff, I mean, believe me, it's a nightmare. But I would not want that nightmare on top of being stuck in a giant truck, not able to leave the truck stop parking lot. So that is not for me. And that is the main reason, personal reason, why I will not be getting a tractor trailer. Now in the future, especially if things keep going like this, definitely be considering it. Going to be hiring, you know, people. Hopefully better people than we've had before. That was a disaster. Those made for some good videos, though. But yeah, I hope this, guys, I hope this gives you some clarity. It's a common question. I hope you guys can make a better decision on what you're going to do. But uh, that's it for me. If you want some paddle shifters, the email will be in the description. We'll get those out. Might be able to sell some in person on our way to Alberta this coming trip. That's right, we're going across Canada. Would love to meet some of you guys. And uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Danger underscore industries, that's the Instagram. You guys, you guys have a good day.